Today's Sister to Sister is really good. There's a question that asks, how do you rejoice with someone who's rejoicing when you're actually a bit envious? Oh, that's good. How about this? People that have been raised to learn God is angry. He's an angry God. What do you say to them? Well, they're not rejoicing. <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, hello, hello. Welcome to Sister to Sister. You have joined a lively bunch of Christian women and we bring answers from our hearts right to your home. And they're questions that you write to us, so we appreciate that so much. And here's what you said. Hmm, oh, this is so good. Why did God create men and women with so many differences and it makes relationships hard? Uh, did he know that this was gonna cause issues? God, did you? <laughs> Roxy? Okay, well, I'm not going to get to my men and women problem here first. I'll do that second. Okay. You know, uh, uh, First Timothy, Paul says bodily training is good for your body, mm -hmm. but godly training is good for this life and the life to come. We are almost like in a training ground. And I'm not going to, I hate to compartment compartmentalized by gender, men and women. There are some men, men that are like me. There are some women and their personalities that are like my husband. I think people in general have different personalities. And as we say, iron sharpens iron. We get better, we're honed in. My husband is quiet, laid back, likes process. I want to run to the goal. And together, once we recognize that, we found out that was a perfect fit. I get the job done, he likes the process getting there. So, all right, okay, I'll wait around for you a little bit, but I'm gonna put fire under you and you're gonna hold my reins back a little bit. So once we realize, recognize the difference is profitable for our godly training, we kind of laugh about it now. I mean, it took 40 years, but. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Difference? You know, I, I think that there are um, major differences between men and women, and, and not to single them out, but I just think that, you know, according to scripture, according to the word, you know, there's the men example in the Bible, the women example in the Bible, there's certain traits and qualities and, and ways of thinking and the way we're wired. And, you know, m my husband wasn't jumping up in the middle of the night when he heard a little, eh, you know, when the baby <laughs> cried, that, there was something in me that came alive, like, oh, the baby needs me now. You know, that was like a natural s design in me. You know, he's like, oh, back to, like, he didn't even hear it. Like the baby probably wouldn't be alive. It was up to my husband. <laughs> but I think that, you know, we say iron sharpens iron. There's something good when we're like grinding back and forth and he's powerful and I'm powerful and he's strong and I'm strong and we've got these differences. It can make for a really powerful uh, life and marriage. Hard, yeah, does it hurt to grind against? Does it hurt for the sparks to fly? Yes, absolutely. But you know what, it would be so boring if we were all the same, it'd be mm -hmm. blah. But I like what Roxanne said about complimenting each other. Yeah. I think that's for George and I too. So how about you, men and women, difference? All rise as we read out the book of flow, <laughs> chapter, creativity of the revelation of the word of God. So in flow's opinion, God created man. And when he created man, he said, he said, yeah, you need some it? help. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm going to reach in and what's already on the inside of you, I'm going to pull it out because you ain't doing too good by yourself. So he does that because he even thought himself, now I done created man and I said, let's do it in our image. Yeah. Now our image is three, God, the father, Jesus, the son, and the Holy Spirit. You can't do it all by yourself. Right. And so there's something about the woman that we are a nurturer. I don't know that mm -hmm. we're all, you know, that big of a difference, but, you know, there are certain things that are just innate in us. Uh -huh. 
you know? And I think as a woman, you know, we are, are very, we can be very administrative, we're nurturers, you know, we're the cheerleaders to keep them going. And, you know, a woman carries, I mean, a man has the seed, but the woman carries the seed right. and gives birth to what the man is carrying. Right. And so mm -hmm. I just kind of think, you know, that God and his wisdom took a look, not that God said he made a mistake, but he just said, <laughs> Brother, you ain't good. doing too good by yourself. Good. This ain't good. You need so, help. That's my thought. <laughs> Do you have a thought on men and women? I mean, I tend to agree with what Rocky said. I just think God made people different, right. you yeah. know, and that we complement each mm -hmm. other. He didn't create robots. He gave us a free will, right. you know, and that we all have these different personalities and characteristics and just hobbies and likes and dislikes and and those are some of the things that attracted us to each other, but they're also the things that kind of drive us crazy after a certain amount of time, you know? And so you, you, don't ex you don't really know what pleasure is without pain. You know, you don't know the one feeling without the other. Okay. And so you have to kind of, you appreciate one with the other. While I've got you, I'm going to ask you this about the angry Christian. Ooh. This is good. Not that you Why are. Why are you asking no. me that? Well, because <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to. Okay. Not cr All right. How do you help a friend? This is again, you write to us. How do I help my friend who grew up in the church where God is depicted as an angry God? So it's not an angry God. Yeah. The, the woman thinks that God is angry. So yeah. now she wants nothing to do with God mm -hmm. or church. What do we do with her? I think this is a, probably a very common thing, actually. I think a lot of people have grown up feeling this way, feeling like God is angry at them. Mm. And this, this is not something you're going to win in an argument, clearly. This is not something you're going to, you know, win in a, in a battle of wills or about, this is something you're going to, they're, they're going to see through a life lived. Yes. They're going to see one. through loving them, through being a friend to them through, it, it's not going to be something you're going to beat them over the head with the Bible and scripture and, well, it says here that God is not angry, okay? <laughs> that is not the way you're going to win somebody over saying, you're, this, is, this is them seeing God through you yes. and not being a hypocrite and not, and just being a loving friend and, you know, inviting them to your church. And, and if they don't want to come, it's not like, well, you don't want to come to my church. It's just, mm -hmm. I think this is through a life lived, through constantly yes. praying for them. It's through the Holy Spirit moving in them. Um, this is a, a life lived yes. thing. And let I, them see Christ in me. I let them do see Christ have a scripture for that. Uh, Colossians 1 says, this is the mystery from the ages and has been revealed in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. They're not going to see the love, the joy, the happiness. And, you know, I'm preaching to the, myself here until they see it in you because life is about relationship. And Jesus ate with the sinners and they thought, oh, this is a drunkard or whatever. He's eating with us. He enjoyed even being with the sinners. Now he didn't get drunk, he didn't do those things, but he related. So we need to also relate to the person who sees God as angry. Right. And so it's their, their upbringing too. Am I an angry Christian? No ma'am. Am I? But I'm saying like, is that what I am reflecting? reflecting? Yes. Yeah. Am I Good. reflecting that God is an angry God by being an angry Christian? Yeah. But it, it was rules. It was rules, right? I mean, you, you lived with rules in lots of churches. You had to do this. You had to do that. If you didn't, I'm yeah. so glad people aren't in here that can throw paper or anything at me because <laughs> You know, the question says, how do you help a friend who grew up in a church where God is depicted as an angry God and now wants nothing to do with the church in any way? And I think all of the answers were great, but the fact of the matter is the God I serve has many characteristics yeah. and one of them is angry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, is anger. Um, and he even instructs us in that, be ye angry and sin not. Mm -hmm. And if God was not wrathful, wrath, Full, then he could not be graceful. And so true. I can't have you read through, through, through mm -hmm. the Bible and meet this God who also says, you know, scriptures like, you know, it's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. all of that. There are things that does not make God happy. Mm -hmm. 
okay? And so that is one of his characteristics. Now, my responsibility as in 1 John, I believe it's chapter four, that talks about the love of God and how it should come, it comes towards us and should mm. operate through us. That is the part that is imperative. And it's mm -hmm. like you said, if you grew up in a church right. and it was taught to you that way, we got a question a little on prayer and I don't want to jump ahead of myself. But one of the things that I have found when people see God as angry, it does come from their background. Right. You know, right. like mm -hmm. I often say that one of my issues in growing and maturing in the Lord was that when God would tell me, no, I'm like, what's up? Mm -hmm. You're God. Yeah. But if I was asking my dad, I would have got it. Right. So why are you saying no, you know? Right. I just, I wanted to make it really clear if you've ever heard somebody say to you that God is mad at you, that he is angry, that he does not love you. It is false right. doctrine That's and right. it is not the truth. God so loved you. Like he so, he wakes up every day thinking about you and, and dreaming about you and longing to be with you. And he loves you so much that he sent his one and only son. It is the love of God that, that compels us. It is the love of God that draws us to him. It is his love. It is, God is love. It is his very nature. So to say that he's an angry God and that he's mad at you, that's a lie from hell. But you know, he is, he does not, God is angry at the sin, sin. not the person. And we no, can't, yeah. we're not doing it any justice when we talk around it. I, I'm all for that. Yeah. God loves you. But I want you to know that. There are people that think he's angry at me and he's mad at me. And I agree. And that's wrong. But you got to give them the whole doctrine. You got to give them everything. But if that's someone's hang up, if someone's not a Christian, they're not church, they're, they're no. literally, uh, is the first thing you're going to come at them well, you know, God is a wrathful God. No, no. I'm saying that right. you ought to be in but, a place, in a position to always yeah. give an answer. I agree. And so when somebody comes to me with that, I need to be mindful of my response. It's, it, it's wonderful. And I agree with you a thousand percent. God is a God of love. Mm -hmm. But what happens when I'm having this intelligent yes. conversation with a person who has read these scriptures that I just gave, it's not just about the background. It's in the word of God. So how are you right. telling me yeah. that God's mm -hmm. not an angry God? No. It's what you said. I want to show you that yeah. he's not angry at you. Well, Jesus and took the wrath of God on himself. He bore it for us so we don't receive that wrath and that anger from God. Again, you're, 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 you're sharing with them the, the, the love of God, but you can't deny what is in the scriptures. You just can't, guys. Right. Love you. I, you can go on and on. It's still, it's, it's still the same. The word of God is the word of God. It, it, it does not change. You can't add one jittle, one tittle to the, you, <laughs> you, you just can't. But the word can't. of God I, is God. I agree okay. though, but you can't, sometimes like, it's like, if somebody's like a, a baby Christian or not a Christian at all, it's like, I agree. Uh, you're going to get caught up on like what version of the Bible they have to read. Like it's, no. it's like, you don't no. get caught yeah. there, but the word says for you to study and show yourself approved right. that you rightly divide the word. Right. Right. So I can give an answer. So when a man or a woman comes to me that is not a Christian, is a Christian, baby Christian, mature Christian, I can articulate a revelatory answer. Sure. And I can't do that if I pick and choose what scriptures I want right. to use. But I have another question. Uh, another question about someone She's who's like, a Christian. Please. Yeah, no, listen. To the question. Listen, this is good because- We're not on a break. You <laughs> You write to us. We want to answer. We want to help you. You wrote, how do I approach a friend who says they're a Christian, but they're not living according to the Bible? Actually, they're living quite the opposite. What do we do with them? Well, you tell them how angry God is at them, <laughs> and then they'll run to him. They have no choice. I mean... He's coming after you, so you better get your life right. That was wrong. That was wrong. <laughs> okay. That was wrong. Like, I would say, like, what is your relationship with this person? Like, what kind of voice do you have in their life, you know? Um, it's interesting because my son came to me the other day, and he said, this kid wants to hang out with me. And I said, you know, I really can't hang out with you because you're really not growing in God. And I was like, <laughs> I was shocked, but I, my 17 year old boy, and I'm thinking, what? So like he was setting a boundary even, that was good. Uh, you know, like you got to up your game because I'm going somewhere with God come and on, in my walk with powerful. God and you need to come up or. That's powerful. I mean, oh. yeah. 
That's good. That's I got good. a 16 year old daughter. Yeah. 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 Gabe's that was powerful. amazing. <laughs> Let's drop a contract. <laughs> yeah. What do you have for us? Oh, wow. You know, Proverbs 17 says that a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. <laughs> adversity doesn't just mean they're going through hard times, they might be sinners. Jesus hung out with sinners, but he was firm in his understanding of where he was with God and where he was in relationship with them. So my thought is this, whoever covers a sin, the Bible says, you know, is good and doesn't repeat it. But the verse right after that says, but the one who accepts rebuke is wise. So you might cover your sister or brothers or friends or person not walking and not repeat it, not talk about them, not always throw it in their face, but you give them a wise rebuke. Amen. And they're going to love you in the end. They might not like you right then. I try really hard not to judge another Christian no matter what, although I appreciate all the advice from my sisters today. <laughs> How do you feel about this? Send us an email, let us know, but stay tuned. We have more sister after this. Welcome back. I'm not going to judge you if you went and got a coffee. No, come on. <laughs> this is so insightful to us angry. because these questions elicit from us, from our hearts, how we really feel. And we're so grateful. So honestly, send us your questions. It's good. And here's one. This is kind of a woman, a woman thing because I don't think boys do this. But how do you, tr maybe they do. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. No, I don't think boys are as envious of each other. Here's the question. Mm -hmm. How do you truly rejoice with people who are rejoicing, having great things happen to them, but deep down, you're nothing but envious? Definitely guys do this, by do the they? way. Yeah. See, I guess my guys For don't, sure. but in my <laughs> life, you. they don't. Um, uh, you can't. You, can, you can't both rejoice for people and be, truly rejoice for people and be envious. You can't. You, you can pretend to rejoice for people and be envious, or you can be envious and not rejoice for people. But you can't do both. It would be fake, honestly. Hmm. So it wouldn't be true rejoicing if you're envying them. So hmm. my, my advice is to pray that the Lord takes that envy from your heart right. because envy hmm. is sin and we're called to rejoice when others rejoice. Right. I think it sounds to me like the person who wrote this might be jealous of another person's success. Right. And that's what it's not right. You know, I think about church life and I'm, I'm telling you, I've, we were there where we were struggling and it was, it, all of hell was trying to get us out of town and there was no money and few leaders and lots of heartache and lots of pain and then you go to a big event at a great church and it's just overbounding you know and you're sitting there you feel like a little peon you know a little you know you're just hurting and so you have to work through some of that stuff in your heart and you've got to say you know what they're in a different place than I am and I don't know their struggle and pain to get where they've gotten and I don't know the assignment on their life and that price that they paid to get there so I think about that now you know setting 25 years later and and as we have a network that helps church planners and young churches and and I I remember how I felt back then and I just want them to feel so loved and empowered and encouraged and and just like they, they're going to make it, you know? See, that's so honest of you, Amy, because it's kind of what Corey's saying. Well, you can't be this, you can't be this at the same time. You were that. You have to work But you it. overcame that. Yeah. And now you can assist others yeah. in not feeling envious of the 2,000-member church, right? Somebody that's been doing something for two years versus somebody that's been doing something for 25 years? You can't compare, you know, oranges and apples. It, it's like we're in a different place, in a different mm -hmm. season, different, a different journey. But it's good to be honest, and you're honest too. Yeah. You said you can't, can't do it. You can't do it. What about you, Rox? Yeah, uh, I look at the emotions sometimes as this scripture. I think it's Jeremiah. I was trying to think of it as they were speaking too. The heart's deceitful. Mm -hmm. The scripture says the heart's deceitful, like 
Flo was talking about angry. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's parts of the scripture we don't want to face. Mm -hmm. We think our hearts are beautiful or we love everybody, so we'll start judging everybody. <laughs> our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. So are we going to act on our feelings or are we going to act on God's Amen. truth? That's right. So God's Amen. truth says, and it's not that we're faking it, okay, my feelings are envious. Right. But God's truth said, I need to rejoice. rejoice. I need right. to cry when Amen. somebody's crying. Amen. I need to empathize and I need to have joy. So we got to go past that. And somebody wrote, I think it's John Bloom, emotions gauge us, not guide us. That's right. right. That's Don't right. let your That's emotions right. guide you. You're going to miss truth. Yeah. I love it. And I think if you're a little more seasoned, not older necessarily, more seasoned, you don't have those same kind of jealousy and envy feelings. But I'm going to go to the next question because it's really good too. And hello. 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 This, is, this is perfect for flow. The like Bible says, question. <laughs> the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And you are such a fervent prayer person. You have in my life. How do you do that? Pray without ceasing. I think first you need to have understanding of what praying without ceasing means. Okay. You know, um, I've been fortunate enough by the grace of God, uh, humbled by God to do some traveling. And, you know, I watch other religions such as my Muslim brothers and sisters, and some might get offended because I refer to them as brothers and sisters, but we mm -hmm. all are created by God. Um, and we worship differently. And I'll never forget, I was in a particular country and I went to purchase something. And the gentleman waiting on me was of the Muslim faith. And I had the money in my hand and it was time for his prayer. He stopped. Wow put his little prayer rug down mm -hmm. and went into prayer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> because in the Christian arena, we have a tendency, well, God understands, yep. you know, um, I got to use wisdom. Let me take this dollar. When mm -hmm. our, our Jewish brothers and sisters, there are prayers that they pray all throughout the day. So what am I saying? The bottom line is prayer becomes a lifestyle. It's not mm -hmm. that you're running around all day long with your lips moving and you're praying, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. it becomes that like my, you know, the some refer to it as being, you know, centered or, or st staying in, in touch. Um, I agree with all of the above. I am in constant, that's my desire to be in constant communication with God. Right. And some of that does not mean me even moving my mouth. It means being having a prayerful attitude where I can hear and listen to him. So I'm not envious. Mm -hmm. He can put his finger on yeah. places in me and show me, hey, you're, you're, you said, oh, that's nice. I'm really happy for you. Right. But inside you were feeling some kind of way right. that comes from having an attitude of prayer, which will cause me to fall on my knees, repent Amen. and get it right and let God do a work. So Amen. prayer for me is your spiritual digestive tract. It is something that is so necessary in our walk with the Lord, but yet it is the most one of the most neglected disciplines. If I say a prophet is coming, the church is packed. If we say uh, we're going to march, right. the church is go. packed. Preach if up. I say Bible study, uh -oh. uh, it kind of scan, you know, scans yeah, right. back a little bit. But when you say prayer, you can have a church of 3,000 and if you get 30 people, you have done good. Right. I love your comment that said you can pray, pray without gibber jabber moving your mouth. And I'm so grateful for these girls who pray for me without ceasing. And we pray for you and we're so grateful that you're part of our sister to sister family. Stay right there. We're going to wrap this up. <laughs> We close with 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Victor Hugo wrote, There are moments when whatever the posture of the body, the soul is on its knees. Mm. Our decision to rejoice pray and give thanks despite our circumstances is powerful. I'm going to get real now. For me, experiencing the sudden death of a loved one, yet expressing to God 
my gratitude for all the beautiful things in his life has brought comfort and a revelation that his spirit is alive forever in Christ. Because Romans 8 says, God's spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and we can cry out as Flo often says, Abba, Father. Amazingly, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has chosen to reveal himself as Father, Comforter, and Friend. All the more reason to rejoice, to pray, and to give thanks, my brothers and sisters. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Thank you, Roxanne, and thank you for being with us. And if you're with us on a regular basis, you know that we have this really cool scripture at the end that says, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen the other. And then I go on to say, oh yeah, they make me a much better Kathy. But guess what? The faith of these women and the faith of you that watch us and write to us makes us all full of the love of Jesus Christ. We're so grateful for you. We'll see you next time.